Hey, how you getting on? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can cull a pyro sim using the frustrum of your camera. Here's the Vex, here's where it goes. I'm Kev Ryan, and here we go. All right, so here we have this fairly basic uh, pyro simulation here, you know? So it's just a bit of fire and a bit of smoke, yada yada, nothing too special. And if I go up here, you can see I have a camera. And if I show the handle here and then right click, change the frustrum handle and then bring it to persistent, we can always see that we have the camera frustrum here. So if you want to use the camera frustrum to call this pyro sim, what we need to do is go into our dot net and we put down a gas field wrangle. Now I found it works anywhere you want to put it in, so I'm just going to put it in right here. So what we need to do is get the frustrum information from the camera and we can do that using a function called 2ndc, which does this. Then we create a vector called ndc and have it equal to 2ndc. Then we're going to make a now channel here for chs and we'll just call it camera hash and then we're going to go ash p. Close that off and then hit this button here to get a camera patch and then I'm just going to go out here, grab my camera and drop it in here. And now that we have that I can create an if statement to basically tell this to look for what's in the space of the frustrum and we can do this by going if um, and we're going to need to do a few of these so this is going to look long and awkward so I'm going to actually do this so what we need to do is basically go ndc dot x because we're checking the x coordinate here and call that less than zero and we need to use the r symbols here and then we'll give ourselves some space here as well and then another one ndc x greater than one and then we just need to copy this but also put in one more r here and then that should be it and i'm just going to change this to y and this one also to y and there we go now we're basically checking to see if something is within this camera frustrum and then all we need to do really is just set it so that that at density is multiplied by or equal to zero. And that will kill all the density outside of this range. And then we can do the same if we want for at frame multiplied and equal to zero as well. And now you'll see already it's begun to just completely kill off any of these values that are beyond the camera frustrum, which is super handy. Um, and then what you can do as well, if you wanted to improve this and kind of give yourself a little bit more leeway on the frustrum, what you could do is is make another float here and call it our padding, and that equals chf padding. And then we just need to add in minus padding behind the zero and plus padding after one, and then repeat. Minus padding. Plus padding. And you'll see now, oh, sorry, I forgot to hit this. And even now, when we adjust this, we can actually see part of that simulation coming back. And that's pretty much it. And if you want to do this with the new SOP level setup, just bear with me. Then all you need to do is go into your .NET again, grab this gas field wrangle, and then in your pyro solver here, Put it into the force output and you'll see now that when you simulate it's being culled by the frustrum also here's a weird thing if you set the vel to be multiplied and equal to zero as well then you get this weird uh, effect where it looks like the frustrum is actually acting as a collider i don't know if that would be any use but it looks pretty cool so yeah, a super handy and super useful thing you can do with the camera frustrum. And this is really useful if you have like a fast moving object that's emitting pyro and you don't necessarily want to simulate the entire trail that it's doing. Something like this. So with that in mind, I hope you found this useful and I will catch you again. Mind yourselves and have a good one. Right, bye.